Hey guys there. Uh, hello everybody. Hey everyone. Combus, you've been making it to the stream every time. Um, Anyway, hello, uh, Matthew Vandervander and Major Idea. Welcome back. All right, let me, give me one second. I'll just post on it. Oh, sorry to hear you're still not feeling well. Let me go ahead and post on Twitter. <laughs> Man, I hope you feel better soon. That sounds very, very rough. a few days worth of work for an event this Friday so I'm kind of I'm still not fully productive yet it's actually I had um you know like I mentioned I went to E3 and then Indie PopCon right after so that was basically Sunday through Sunday I got back Sunday night and then I actually had family in town on Monday and Tuesday so that I just didn't get a whole lot done there but um One of the things I want to talk about today, and I know people do talk about how the game has changed a lot, but um, so this is really cool. Northern Lion did a best of E3 video. He did. He used. Um, he talked about five games that he really liked, and Manifold Garden was number three. That's really cool, but, um, uh, like, see, I get a lot of stuff like, seems like an antechamber ripoff, to be honest. Um, we, I, I think Northern Lion did, did get this a bit confused. He said there was a dynamic lighting engine, which is not exact, which is not really, which is not true. Um, but, uh, for a second there, I thought Manifold Garden was by the same guy that made Antichamber. Is it Manifold <laughs> the same art style as that other game I cannot remember the name of? Right, Antichamber. 
Man, if I were guarding no sooner as MC, I should be game. <laughs> Few men right, right in the middle. Cool, yeah, um... I mean, I know people have talked about it being different, but it seems like a lot of the um, yeah, man, if I the same dudes, it's it's anyway. This this happens a lot. So, oh, what major idea? Can you link me to that? It's gonna be, look, watch, I bet it's going to be, um, huh. No mentions of antechamber yet. Um, They talk. All I hear is Sims music. Um, that's kind of cool, though. Let me move it over. I'll have to watch that later. That is pretty cool, but I get um because this has gameplay. Hey, swim, son. Hey, wow, so many people. Sinocron, Swim Swum, Dr. Casulet, few men left. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think it's the, um... Yeah, like you guys said, I think, I think because it shows the gameplay, um, that there's less comparisons and people have a better idea of what it's about. Is there commentary? The streets, and they oh. reach a point where the city has defied the laws of physics and basically folded on top of itself. This is how manifold. Oh, sick! They do talk about it. Okay, I'm just gonna tweet that video because that's kind of cool. So. Just a second, I just kind of tweeted that, and uh, so, day's gone, day's gone, whoa, that's, uh, that's the one they showed at the, uh, at the conference, right, that looks very cool, um, on PS4, and, um, Yeah, I think I think the lesson is I need to show more of the gameplay. I think I think uh, few men left is right that the more gameplay I show, the more people see the difference between this game and Antichamber. And it's not I don't think the comparisons are necessarily bad. People are going to do it anyway. It just it's super frustrating to have made a whole lot of changes. And then basically still have people call the game an antechamber ripoff, like, you know, um, 
just don't know if I... It's like, to spend five years making a game and then everyone's just like, ah, yeah. It's antechamber, but not as good. Kind of sucks, so... I'm not necessarily sure if there is an, um... solution to that. Or maybe I should just not worry about it. Are you... Well, you said you worked on Days Gone, but not anymore. Um... So you... Are you, you finished with that project? I guess if they're showing at E3... Attaching? What's, uh... What does attach... What's attaching? Attach, I see. Yeah, it's hard not to do it. Um, oh, sick. I guess you can't talk. I was going to ask you what you did, but then I just remembered you said earlier you're not allowed to talk about it. Bend is... Yeah, I think ultimately it's like if you make a good game, that will just come out and... Right, once once people play the game. And I know Alex Bruce told me, like, he had people that sort of dismissed it as, like, a Portal clone. Um, or a Portal ripoff. So now I'm just... Ugh. Uh, oh, what? Wow. Yeah, that guy is like, he saw, there was like, I mean, to be fair, all in, in Northern Lions video, it was just sort of footage from the trailer, the teaser trailer zooming out. Um, that's true, yeah. I just wonder if, I think the art style is like, because I feel like so many other games, indie game, like games just look similar, and, uh, but maybe because like that's just, um, those, those, um, those art styles are more commonly used. That you don't, you don't really get that comparison, but there's really not a whole lot with, um, just, hey, all right, see you, Major Idea, thanks for staying, uh, thanks for stopping by, um, we'll see you around, have a good one, um, Well, it's crazy that you can't even say your company's name. Yeah, I just not to... I, this... To be... The thing is, you know what? That thing happens to me all the time, actually. Like... Every time I get press, I should be happy. And then, oh, I'm just like... Ugh. Antichamber comparisons. I think maybe also because it's a lot of people's first time finding out about it. And so perhaps if, like, looking at the Northern Lion video, I think maybe the... Tom is doing great. Tom will be coming here and working with me in person tomorrow. Um, so we will get to talk for a bit. Um...
Right. That's also a really good point about the shooters. Um... Ah, I got it. Like, you're right, and I think the what Northern Lions video indicates more than anything is that a lot of people are learning about the game for the first time. Right? Because as opposed... Because it seemed like they were just like, is this, like... I think maybe that also would be my first reaction if I saw the game. Like, did the guys that made Antichamber did that? Because I haven't seen this before. Whereas maybe the more they learn about the game... Um... Oh, come on. The more information that they'll have. And then they'll actually start to understand the differences. Why is this... I really hate how this happens in Unity. Like these floating point things. Yeah. Hey, Praetorian1978. Yeah. Yeah, I know people on, on YouTube just sort of like to comment on kind of the first thing that comes into their head. So, but, um, but I think that's just the, that's, I guess, just sort of the uphill battle that I have to fight for this game. Um, you know, how, how can I be even more mind-bending than antechamber, I suppose? What? Is this thing broken? I think it's just flush and the art style is outline and colors which is similar to it's like if you said cell shading right hmm. yeah i think once once the gameplay once more of the gameplay appears and the uh, kind of water and gardening mechanic comes out, people will compare it less. What? Yeah, well, it shouldn't be flush. That's the weird thing. I think my... <sighs> this sucks. Or I might have been hit hitting P... Oh, you know what? I, I think I was just hitting the wrong key. See about outsourcing. I never understood why that was such a big deal. Right. Yeah, I'm. A t I'm. I'm definitely attaching. 
I think I just need to stop reading. Why the... the depth then it would be like, oh well, it wasn't actually interesting, right. Ay, 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 ay. I need to do is my nexus needs to be beam two. Oh, except we're deleting these beams anyway. I think that your game compares favorably in terms of how interesting it is to play, and I think the art style is the right choice for the game. Yeah, the broad strokes are definitely the same. I just gotta, I just gotta go with it. Hey, Amber's Arcade. Yeah, I think part of it was just I felt like I made a lot of changes to distinguish and it was still like, ugh. But yeah, I think it's really, you know, at the end of the day, just that a lot of people are coming to the game for the first time. And I think it's more frustrating when people are like, it looks exactly the same. And it's like, <laughs> no, it doesn't look exactly the same. <laughs> but, I mean, of course, that's... that's uh, that's YouTube, so I don't know <laughs> what I'm expecting there. I think, I wonder if also maybe there's some kind of contract with those studios where they're just like, it helps, it helps them with their image. Initial comment about the wrapping to help solve the puzzle. I think it's when. Huh. Okay. I think my. I think I just need a better trailer. Like the teaser was too. Uh, left too much to question. But. Um... Yeah, I don't know if it's just me, but I haven't gotten any strong anti-chamber vibe. I think the art cells are tough, interesting. You're definitely in the minority. Rhyme looks like Ico, but that's a good thing for the game, right? If the game appeals to the same... Hey! Yeah.
Huh. So, by the way, did anyone, is anyone getting an issue where, for some reason, you need a... She got a message saying some people aren't able to participate in the chat because they can't sign in with a Facebook account. Man, that's... When is... Why did, did Twitch just start doing this? That's... Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ah, hey, yes, okay. Pretorian, well, I'm glad you're able to participate in chat. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't have been happy if they started, because I don't like, personally, I don't like logging into things with my Facebook account, because, um, <clears throat> yeah, you don't know, like, Facebook tracks all sorts of weird shit. The less, the less we, everyone uses Facebook, the better it is for everyone, I think. Well, no, I mean, uh, I, he I hear LeBron is staying with uh, the Cavs. Not really much of a surprise. <laughs> No, I didn't think he was gonna go anywhere. I just just some people were talking about that. And I thought it was funny. I think I think they were sus expecting him to go to L. Some people suspected he'd go to L. A. or something. Hey, that one gamer one two three four Marcel, how you doing? Welcome back. Um, the proof is in the pudding. Yes. Uh, does that mean the proof is when the game? The proof is in the gameplay. Yeah, people talking about the game, that's good. When the game comes out, people talk about how it's good and convince us to be. Yeah. Yeah, I think as long as... I think the sign that, like, these journalists and YouTubers are interested in the game is sort of a... I should just be happy with that, right? It's in Game Informer. It was best of E3 at IGN. Second place reboot award. Um, and lots of best of E3s from, like, yeah. Like, like I said, IGN, Northern Lion, uh, Polygon... Factor News uh, from France really liked it. It was actually really nice. Someone sent me this video 
this uh, this article uh, today that I think is is really really wonderful. Uh, and and these guys they were actually not an appointment. They were just stopping by. They were kind of walking around, and I was just like, hey, you guys want to check out this game? And um, But, um, I don't know, let's see, translate to English. It had really cool stuff because they were saying like, uh, you know, there was good or very good, but no one hooked jaw. And then suddenly they, <laughs> they were like, a nervous developer, want to play my game? <laughs> but, um, anyway, they were, they were super like this. Um, it wasn't too bad. I, I mean, I had a, it was just very busy. So yeah, Amber, you're enjoying Brigador. Yeah, at the end of the day, I think that's that's what I should be focusing on. I mean, just make a great game. And, I mean... Does anyone know what program is open there next to Word? Oh, that's Discord. Uh, we do have a... Um, by the way, let me add this. We do have a Discord channel if you want to join. Um, that's the Discord channel. Making games is hard. There was so much. There was all that conversation uh, about Mighty Number no. Nine. I think. I think mainly because like Sony, the Hedgehog Twitter account, made fun of them. I don't think they've had such a great launch. Um, but I thought Rami's um, points were pretty good. That it's like, like I don't think like no. I, I mean I definitely don't think those guys set out to screw over anyone, right? But. It's a lot to... I think people were like expecting that game to bring back the joys of you know, these wonderful memories from their childhood and it, it's like, well, sorry that doesn't happen. Um, nice. Oh. Yeah, I think it's, I'm, you know what, I'm really curious to see how um, Fig is going to turn out. If you guys know about that, that's Fig was started by, I, I think, Tim Schafer and a bunch of, and maybe somebody else at Double Fine. But um, it's sort of like Kickstarter. It's only for games, but they're doing it more as like an investment model. Like explicitly so, in that, in that the sense was... Um, Um, what 
talking about. Oh, right. Like, like Kickstarter is not explicitly investment, right? And, and I think a lot of the conversation yesterday was that ultimately you should be looking at Kickstarter as like a way to help somebody, a creator, finish their project or, or make it a reality. Yeah, there's been a lot of great Kickstarter games. Divinity, Original Sin, Octodad was Kickstarter, um, Shovel Knight, I think, Armello, like... Bro, even though Broken Age is pretty good quality, enjoy the first half. Well, they're also doing. Um, oh, right, Scale. Well, Scale is not out yet. Um, back more board games on Chaos. I think I burned out by old indie game sites. Ah. But um, what am I remembering? What am I trying to recall? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure scale will be good. Um, what's that game that won the IGF? That's one of the first games on Fig. Oh, come on, everybody was talking about it. Um, wow, what did they name their game? It won. I think it won like two years ago. Outer Wilds, that's it. Yes. That wasn't that the first game. I thought that was the first game on um, on Fig. I haven't heard anything about that game. I'm curious how it's doing. I just remember an actor was backing it, like an actor from Heroes or something had a game studio, which is very interesting because. I was like, Game Studio is a lot of work. I don't know how you juggle a whole other job with that. Actually, you really like Broken Ace. I'm the puzzle I didn't get. But overall, it's a really strong, even among the classic adventure. Hey, Swim Song, thank you for stopping by. Um, yeah. Feel free to, uh, yeah, hope to see you back here again. Um. Hey, P Fist, welcome back. How are you doing? Oh, you know one thing that was really awesome was that uh, all the news articles basically was like, like when the game got posted on Reddit or was on Twitch, people were like, hey, you know, the developer actually is very active on Twitch and streams development regularly. So that was really cool to see that. It seems like, um, like a lot of people are, are following the game 
uh, here or following development and that's that's really yeah I think that's just such a great that's a really great sign how do I make uh, stairs again Trying to remember the shortcut. Got back from the grocery store and getting back into game dev mode. I need to hit the grocery store later. Has Steve been has Steve been streaming? Grocery store, we should. It's so much. Oh, come on. Ah. Oh. God damn it. Oh. Why is why does why is Visual Studio doing this? Hey, Connor Youngs. Um, oh, fuck the shit, man. Do that afterwards. So I, I really hate this, like, you have to be logged in to do stuff. Um, don't worry, Amber, we don't, uh, there's not a whole lot of spoiler. We're mostly kind of doing something. I'm trying to figure out what exactly I used as the shortcut. Hey, C circle. I don't understand why. Like, I really hate this having to log in. Like, I got the thing legally through whatever BizSpark or whatever. Just like, um, Joan gets pissed at a lot of stuff, but that was totally valid. This is such bullshit, too, man. Yeah, doing it, Amber. The uh, on the stream, I don't really show gameplay. Instead, it's just me swearing at things. Um, all right, guys, I'm just actually just doing this. for no plus plus. Figure out where I ah okay hold on guys 
I am going to turn off the monitor so that I can just, I can't do this. I'm just going to enter my credentials. Yes, but <sighs> you need a special app from your motherboard manufacturer. Oh, wait. Okay, I was looking at the wrong tool. It's actually the line mesh generator. So it's L key code to go up is that and down is L, yeah. This is such a strange disjointed company. Yeah, I'm still on Windows 7. I am. I'm not updating. I do not want to... I don't really want to fuck with what I've got right now. Like, the thing is, is like, somebody was right... There was this article uh, that came out and just about how these... It's so crazy that we get our, that these companies make just changes to their UI all the time because the UI becomes like, is such an intimate part of your experience. Like, I spend so much time on this desktop, right? And it's sort of like you have this home and you've got your bookshelf where you put, um, you, um, 
you know, you've got that one bookshelf where you put your magazines and you've got those other shelves and you organize things this way and you get used to that. And then it's like, you know, imagine just every six months they're, they're like, well, you can't live here unless you organize this shit the way we've set it up. That is kind of what that's like. Tend that has diagonal tearing in the what? Um I mean it is it is true. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, and just being like, yep, you can't, uh, you can't live here unless you update this. Or he's like, yeah, you know, I'm just gonna come and fix the plumbing. And it's like, boom! <laughs> New arrangement of everything. That's like the Windows 10 tactics. Those are the Windows 10 update tactics, man. What's this line? So these are the lines that basically they, when you, and by the way, hello MZ stream. So you basically put a block down, this line gets lit up, it shoots up a laser beam. So they, these lines at the moment, they indicate that, um, like the, they go to this door. What I did was I extended them I extended these things a little bit longer so now the lines don't match up. So I'm basically just kind of going through and, and replacing them. Line door D. I'm gonna come and fix my and pay no mind to the cameras in the shower. <laughs> I think it's, it's a good thing Jet User isn't here. <laughs> Jet user is uh, one of the mods, and uh, and we love Jet user, but Jet, Jet user works for Microsoft, so sometimes uh, when we go on our Microsoft rants, rants, he's always like, "Guys, that's not what happened." Um, let's ten. The first one is free. Yeah, like the other thing is I do not approve of software piracy. I buy all the software, everything I have here I bought. Yeah, I don't... I mean, yes, I did pirate things when I was a teenager, um, but no longer. Mostly because it's just like a huge pain in the ass, but also, like, as a software creator, um, you know, people should be compensated for the work, but... Piracy, the problem is piracy is like starting to become the only way you can actually own something. Like, I don't mind buying things, but let me own it and not have it be like a... Uh... Like, I just, I want to be able to pay up front and buy something outright and just own it. Uh, but it doesn't seem like businesses want that model anymore. <laughs> yeah. Every time I am and, and I can... Um,
Well, that's the thing with music too. Like I, 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 you know, want to support musicians. I try buying from. If people have it on Bandcamp, I will always buy it from there. Like I bought the new Radiohead album. They have like a different store, but no way I'm using Apple. Like I change computers so often. Uh, you know, and I've all this music that I bought in college, I can't even access it anymore because you can only have it on five computers. Um, yeah, Blu rays on my non internet connected PC. I've used a cracked version of some Blu ray software, which I paid for. <sighs> What is Adobe's business model now? Isn't it just $50 for you get to use all the Adobe software? Oh, but uh, yeah, I don't like six. Wait, what? There's an early termination fee? Jesus. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. God. Seventeen point five. Seventeen point five plus fourteen. So that's what that's this part is seventeen point five. Oh wait a minute. I think this should be Z should be Minor UX changes. Don't know about CC. Haven't used it. Best in let's see here. Connor Young's. I think they made the detection of the magic wand to a better. Um, 
Oh wait, what's the competition for Windows? Is that Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo? Interesting. Um, is that not, uh, let me see this here. Somebody said the chat is not updating. Hopefully that works. Yeah. Okay, I think I fixed it now. Hey, Zombie Golf, hello. So you free some shoes to Adobe and Autodesk software that's great from them. I realize they're perpetuating as the industry standard, making sure all professionals. Yeah. you wonder how that got started initially like was it uh how did how did it get adopted um hi software scary scary world Are there anyone here watch The Office? Hey, well, Zombie Golf, welcome. Uh, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here. <laughs> Yikes. Um, yeah, we've got a, got a really great community. Feel free to introduce yourself and tell us, uh, tell us what you've been up to. Um, how you find yourself here. Ah. Uh, oops, this is the wrong one there. Opeth, hello, welcome. We are just talking about, uh, we were kind of just kind of complaining about subscription models for software. I was trying to open up a script here, and I guess like uh, Open Visual Studio needed me to uh, re-enter my credentials, which is really annoying. And mostly right now what I'm doing is kind of adding basic things uh kind of redoing these lines we decided to make this part a little bit more um more exaggerated uh so that players have an easier way of finding their way around this air this um this puzzle this level yes that was cool I do like, yeah, we we didn't get a chance to talk about the um, the Unity change, but it seems like they were very happy to listen to, they, well, I don't know if they were happy to do it, but they, they did listen to feedback from developers and made some changes, so definitely give them props for that. Um, the, you know... A cynical side of me, though, is wondering: Well, do we are, are we sort of like the uh, the frog that's being that gets gets boiled? You know, like um, like over time. Sure, you know, over time they'll just increase the. Uh, the price ever so slightly. Um, and the 
before we know it, it's even harder to be an indie developer. <sighs> like with government surveillance? Yep. Um, yeah, did anyone see that picture of Mark Zuckerberg, by the way? They, uh, had a, just like a picture of him holding, like, an Insta- like, a piece of cardboard that's shaped like the Instagram thing. Um, and he had both his mic and his camera taped over. Yeah. Which is, I think, ultimately, though, that's why it's good to have competition, right? This is, this is exactly why we don't want monopolies. Um, though, it, it does feel like with software, I'm really curious to see how we make, how people do anti-monopoly stuff for software, because it seems like it just lends itself to that, right? It's like, well, you know, if you're a student and everyone is using Photoshop, then like, well, you're going to learn Photoshop. Um, and if you're a company and all the students are coming in using Photoshop, well, it's cheaper to, to do that than to train people to use like some other piece of software. So like, it seems like with software, people tend to want to standardize which leads to monopolies, which ironically, I guess, is worse for the consumer in the end. Oh, so I thought Final Cut Pro used to be a really great piece of software until Apple, like, dumbed it down for some weird reason. Um, Pay what you want, price is hurt to know. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that's, that's cool, you know, and I know a lot more indie devs doing it. I think, like, yeah, that's definitely a very hard choice. It's like, if I were starting to make a game now, would I be doing, um... That, that's actually a much harder choice. I feel like five years ago when I started, Unity was pretty much the, the clear choice. Um, whereas now, it's like, oh. Yeah, I just mean like uh, the, the, the landscape is very different. Um, Basically, had to redo all of these lines. So this, the next one here would be the next one in base is beam blue. 
beam's next one is top. So beam blue next is But I need to include Beam 2's next is the base. So, and then this should have. Um, base A. This time with blueprints real enough for me. There's a third party text based scripting language, so Skookum script. Combis, well, thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you around. You take care. All right, let's 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 run this and see if there's anything, uh, if we're going to get any problems. Too much C-sharp. So, so it doesn't have a... Um, there's no scripting language? played Undertale yet. Oh my god, there's a stack overflow exception? What? Oh, it's with the line displays. I'll fix those later. What the fuck? Lighting up my beam. So, I really should just do it like this. This should make it this close to that. There we go. What? Why is my beam not lighting up? Come on, fuck this shit. 
This is game development for me. Because I don't have an audio source? Ambient's underwater deep dark. David Lynch fans. Oh, yeah, I'm a huge David Lynch fan. Well, not like huge, but I'm, I'm a big fan of his work. I've seen Blue Velvet, Eraser Head, um, Mulholland Drive as well. They're all really fun. Oh, and Twin Peaks, you'll love that. Yes, it's supposed to it's supposed to light up. I'm not really sure why it's not happening. Oh, 
Oh, you've seen Twin Peaks already. Yeah, I don't, I just don't understand why it's not, uh... Actually, I'm wondering if it's a bug with another problem with the chain listeners here. I think it's actually another chain listener that's being weird. Oh, I've also decided to get a new accountant because my old one hasn't responded to me in over a month. <sighs> Who does that? Like... Hubert, uh, I actually do all the 3D modeling inside Unity 3D. Yeah, like, I had to, my taxes had to get, I had to file for an extension. Well, she filed an extension, but that was mostly because she wasn't responding back to me. She didn't respond back to me in time. And every time I talk to her, she's sort of like, oh, I don't know about that, I have to look it up. Which makes me really worried. Um, especially once the game starts to go on sale, you know, like, if you screw up accounting there, that can be the difference of, well, depends how the game does, but it could be a pretty significant chunk of money. Um, anyway, it's like, she's like, doesn't give me any confidence when I ask her questions, and then she also takes forever to respond to emails, so, I'm just like, it's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna work with you then. So I actually have to end the stream pretty soon because I got to call this new pro- this, like I emailed some other game developers in Chicago recommended this person to me and um, I was like, yep, they are great. So I wonder if I should not have this. Yes, this is the music from Sims 2. Oh, wait, there's a new Twin Peaks? Um, okay, what the, oh, come on, what is the deal here? I'll have to ping Tom. Anyway, this new guy, comes recommended to me from two game studios so and the price is like the same as my current accountant so we're switching very exciting I don't understand why this beam isn't lighting up man 
I've been under the game development rock, man. <laughs> In which I only think about this game. But, Could be a direction thing. What's at the top of the tower? It's red. Holy shit. Do you guys hear that? It is storming. That's crazy. It's not raining, but I think it's about to. Um, we were talking about it earlier with, uh, yeah, I mean, by art style, I mean comparisons to Antichamber. And I think a lot of what uh, Matthew Vandervander talked about, which is that I think I'm attaching to it too much. Like, it's all these people comparing the game to Antichamber. And some people say it's a ripoff, but it's really based on, like, 10 seconds of footage from the teaser trailer, which doesn't show any gameplay. It's literally... So... Okay. Um... <laughs> this is Sims 2. Um... Just change color of object. What's that? Uh... No, no, no. So it's a little more complicated than that. We are, um... Got two boxes, red, blue, of just change color of object. Okay, I will see you later. I might, yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap up this stream pretty soon. Let me figure out why this blue one isn't fucking working. And uh, hey, Grandy Coos, thank you for the follow. Hey, 
Hey, Beefkeck. Welcome. This is, I uh, do not prefer Willy C. <laughs> How you doing, Beefkeck? Where, what brings you here today? Where are you coming from? Why is this blue one not working? Oh, Vancouver. Lazy afternoon. I need to catch up on that. Yeah, well, I, I unfortunately I don't think Clark Tank uh, has them archived at the moment. Well, thank you for stopping by. I uh, actually met uh, some of the developers from Darkest Dungeon. They are based in Vancouver. And, uh, here, Moren. What the fuck? Hmm. I like how you spell the tweeter instead of Twitter. Seven episodes are archived. Oh, okay, so it looks like he does have them archived. And, uh, hey, Low Polytech, thank you for the follow. ban people again? What the 
heck? The button is hooked up. Ty, how you doing? I'm actually about to wrap up the stream. I can't figure out This one's totally working But this one isn't I am going to have Tom look at it Tired. Welcome to the club. Uh, well, Tom joined about uh, three weeks ago, so and uh, mostly I'm just not sure what the hell is happening here. It's very weird. Yeah, Tom Huffman, if you guys come on the stream, Tom will actually be here tomorrow. And we're going to do like a... We will be chatting with him. On what the... How to kind of... I have Tom. Tom comes down and works with me in person twice a month. I think that's been very helpful for both of us. It's actually not like antechamber at all. Um, no, there are some comparisons. It's more like, yeah, it's a puzzle game where you let me talk about. Um,
There is a special goal, but uh, I will be spoiling the game if I talk about it. Maybe something's wrong with this guy. Okay, uh... <laughs> no, we encourage anti-chamber talk. Um, but I need to, I need to try to get away from that comparison. But it's just going to happen, so I'm just going to accept it. Alright. You solve puzzles to get to the goal. Solving puzzle is both the goal of the game and the way to get to the goal. Alright, so... From the very basic level, you have the ability to change gravity like this. Oh, so the world wraps around. And we start to use this to do different things with it. Uh, but right now, I've been having some problems with the lines that are lined up. Way to get to the goal and the goal. Yeah. That's not true, actually, Ed Riofer. And I actually play puzzle games other than a way to solve puzzles. Um, yeah. Like, I think, um... I think, uh, Portal, actually, is quite similar. Um, hey, Andy246. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 ultimately, what's challenging is trying to appeal to both. To do, create, both, um... to create interesting puzzles that are sufficient for people who are just interested in puzzles. But I think to reach a broader audience, ultimately, I'm going to have to... Uh, uh, you are going to have to... Right, but, but Ed, I think it's important to realize that people who just play puzzles for the sake of puzzles is a small minority. And I think the the sales of Steven Sausage Roll is indicative of that. And for me, like, I'm someone that is making a puzzle game and spends a lot of time thinking about puzzles. And even me, I'm not, like, super interested in Steven Sausage Roll, right? Because I think, ultimately, for me, these are... There's something sort of bigger that I'm trying to get at here. Um... Hello, Tucci2. Um, all right, all right. Let's let's everybody be cool. Um, there is. Um, well, it's gonna take a little bit too long for me to explain at the moment because I am wrapping up the stream and I can't. I would show you gameplay, but we got this thing and it's kind of broken. But. It is, it is both, it is a journey and some problems. Yeah. Um, like, the game is sort of a metaphor for the last 400 years of, of um, physics. You start off learning about gravity, and then by the end you're thinking about the shape of the universe itself. Um... But yes, please remember to be respectful of one another in the discussion. <laughs> um, 
Don't get... Remember, at the end of the day, we are just talking about video games. Okay, guys, please calm down. Let me just show... I will show Chai Tai what an example of one of the puzzles is. So I'll show you, like, a very simple puzzle. Um, but I'm not going to... I won't be able to demonstrate everything because this level... We're trying to fix some things, and it's actually kind of broken right now. Um... <laughs> People get into really intense discussions here. Um, so I'll talk about one of the puzzles. So, actually, maybe just go through the beginning. Okay, this is the opening. And so at the very beginning, we learned that we can change gravity. And uh, we learned that we can press these buttons to open doors. This is all very simple. We learn we have to be on the same color. So for example, when I'm on blue, I can't interact with this. I have to be on green. Uh, and then we also learn that we have boxes. Same thing, I can only pick up a red box when I'm in red. Um, when I'm in yellow. No, let's let's not uh, let, let's not let's not get, get personal here. We're just different there are different ways of approaching games and different ways of approaching puzzles. Um, so there's all, and I think all of them is valid. And what's what's challenging as a designer is making games, um, uh, making games that appeal to a wide range of people. So, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so here is, I'll give you a taste of one of the puzzles in the game. This is an early, early puzzle. Um, I've got this blue box and I want to put it on this, right? We've learned that we need to get same color boxes on the same color panels. So I've got the blue box on the switch. But... Right, that door keeps when I let go. It, when I let go, the blue box slides down. When I learn those, I can switch into green and place the box here because green isn't affected by blue. Right now, I can't interact with the blue box when I'm in green. Only the green box. But when I switch into blue, I can then place the blue box on top of the green. So that's a very very simple puzzle. kind of giving you a taste of that um, but I mean later on the game gets a little more complicated um, and there's more stuff so for example you learn that when you fall off the world it actually continues itself so there's a whole lot of stuff right you can also change your gravity in different directions you can fall forever so Anyway, I am going to wrap up the stream now because I need to call this new accountant. But if you guys, if anybody wants to continue, if you like the stream, you should definitely uh, follow the channel. Um, and also, we also have a Discord. I've just posted the link to the Discord server. If you like that, um, we can continue the conversation there. We can talk about puzzles and game design and architecture. Um, and I, otherwise, I will be back tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. Central. Tom will be here. So we're going to do more of like a production planning stream talk. Um, anyway, it's been fun hanging out with all of you. I will see you guys later.